Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Neo Marketing Podcast. Today, we're going to continue our conversation about the power of audio and specifically disrupting the music industry. Welcome to the Golden Group Neo Marketing Podcast, a bi weekly discussion on modern business communication. Good morning, Pritch. How are you today? Good morning, Kyle. I'm doing great. How about yourself? Fantastic. Today you're, we're going to continue. You're a little laundry this morning. We're going to continue the conversation <laughs> about the power of audio that we've had twice before on the show. Right. Last month and then recent before that when we were doing our weekly show. But a completely different conversation today. Okay. Today I want to talk about, so the, the power of audio is passive audio delivery. We're using our mobile devices, podcasts, all kinds of things like that, right? Plus the traditional power of audio being uh, commercial jingles and audio cues and movies and things like that, right? Right. So, and the reason that podcast and other, and even short form video and things like this show are working now is technology. Uh, cameras are cheap. Video store just cheap. You can stream it over the internet, right. right? All of this stuff that didn't exist even two years ago, and definitely not five, and for sure not ten and twenty years ago, that we couldn't do with audio or video like this, right? Exist today. Well, this is a pretty sweet setup, but it didn't cost a fortune either. No, but plenty of people are are making a lot of money and having a lot of attention off cell phone videos, right? Like, you know, selfie yeah, held, yeah, yeah. right? Cell and phone the new videos. the new iPhone XS with its you know, depth of field now in a, in a phone. All right. Mean, Basically there are great cameras and yeah. video production units yeah. that also make phone calls. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the way that people are doing this on social media and, and creating their own self brands, et cetera, yeah. the exact same reasons that works now, the technology, social media, the internet connection is the same reason why the old model of the music industry is a dinosaur that deserves to die. See, I told you folks, he was Henri this morning. Deserves to deserves die. to die, die, die. So die. many people may not know. I started my first fifteen years as a professional, starting as a teenager in the music industry, yep. uh, and technically fifteen years from nineteen eighty five to nineteen ninety eight into two thousand. I worked full time as a, as in the music industry, along with going to high school, college, and beyond uh, at the same time. So I, my heart is in the music industry, but sure. this was pre internet. Yeah. This and it was the beginning of digital production. Uh, it's still. Digital recording units were big, huge things you had to have a big studio for. They cost thousands, thousands, thousands of dollars. Yep. Uh, burning our own CDs was still very expensive. My first CD burner was $4,000. Oh, now they come built into right. every laptop you buy, right? right? So the technology has become different. It's changed, and the way that music is distributed now, the way it's promoted, everything, gives the power back to artists, which is a fantastic thing. Yeah. Because... The industry has always screwed artists. The music industry is bad for artists. There you said it. I mean, you had to. Right. (laughs) So, folks, what I want to tell you today, and there are other business correlations to this as well. Absolutely. If you're a musician, if you're in a band, if you're an artist of any sort, you have the control to produce, distribute, market, promote, and make connections with your audience via the technology that's available to you today. Absolutely. So stop waiting for the music industry to discover you and force the right audience in the world to discover you through your own efforts. Right. No, exactly. Uh, My my daughter-in-law is a singer and songwriter, and she discovered a long time ago that self-publishing is a heck of a lot better way to go. Absolutely. Yep. So in the old days... You got a record deal. They gave you some upfront money. They paid to put you in the studio. They paid to make music videos. They paid for posters and photo shoots and all this stuff. And it seemed like they were paying for it. The truth was they were paying for it out of the money you would eventually make when you distributed your music via albums right. or radio play or other forms of payment. They took their money first. Right. They recouped those costs. Then they took their money for giving you the opportunity to be the next Beyonce or Jay-Z right. or Elvis. Right. And then after all of that, if something was left, you got a portion of what was left. Of what was left. If you're lucky. Yeah. There's also was physical distribution. They made records. They made cassette tapes. They made CDs. They made the packaging. They shipped it on a truck to a store. 
people on the store unloaded it, put it on shelves. All of that's cost. Right. That cost has gone away now. Yeah. Right. Streaming, iTunes, other digital downloads yeah, absolutely. doesn't happen anymore. Recording studios used to be bigger than the size of this room and had to be soundproofed. Yeah. It had to be isolated. It had to have all this specific equipment. And you had to pay an engineer and a producer to put it all together for you. And that's how I made my money back in the day. I was an engineer and a producer because I knew how to run all the stuff and I owned all the stuff. Yeah. Now, what we could accomplish in that big studio room, you can accomplish on something like this. Absolutely. And it works really well. It gives you speed. It gives you flexibility. It give, But it lowers the cost. Yeah. The problem is too many artists are still stuck in the old ways of producing an album and getting a record deal. Got to get a record deal. No, right. that's not how things work anymore. Right. You And you also don't need to be Beyonce. Right. She's making all the money right now. Right. right. There are plenty of people making all the money at the top. That's fantastic for them. But you don't have to be at that level to be highly successful, happy, have a cause, something that you believe in that you want to do every day. Right. You know your why, of course, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, have a reason to get up and produce work and do all of the effort in order to do it is part of being an artist and musician. You can do that now because you have control over the process. Yeah. And so that is the point for musicians. Stop thinking about record deals and be at the apex. Produce music, put it out. Engage your audience. Use your social media. Create relationships. Create collaborations. Don't think about how much do I sell this song for. Right. Think about how to build an audience, and that audience will in the future buy songs, buy T-shirts, buy posters, buy tickets to your shows, buy all the, you know your merch, all of that good stuff, anything you endorse. Right. Uh, right? Right. Those are the ways that you can make money, right. not do I get a dollar for this song or do I get $5 for a CD or do I get $10 for an album? Right. It's great to recoup your cost and to, sure. and to make some money. Sure. I don't want artists to starve. I want artists to make money Absolutely. and be in complete control of their career. Yep. But I don't want artists to be so focused on, I have to make my money on this one perfect song. Right. Because the fact is, there's really not a perfect song. And the other fact is, Today, you can build a career by putting out 500 songs that are pretty good right. as opposed to one perfect song that right. you want to balance your... And if it, does, if it works, you're rich. If it doesn't, you're not. Right. That's a flawed model. Well, what you're talking about is flipping the model. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that, and that has applicability well beyond the, uh, the music industry. I think you, you're seeing it. Even even in the corporate public relations realm, flipping the model, you don't you don't have to worry as much about media hits and getting your boss on Good Morning right. America, right? Because you you are the publisher now. You right? have control over you creating control and putting over, out the message, right? and you have so many more options right. that it isn't an all or nothing scenario. Yeah. But what you said about finding your audience is really important. And, and that also transcends beyond music because yes. you, if you're just if you're just shouting into a hole, <laughs> nobody hears it. Or a crowd. Or a crowd, <laughs> right? If yeah. it's not the right crowd. So finding your audience is really, really important. Yeah, absolutely. So any business model that's based in how we've always done it, yeah. which is what the music industry is, yeah. uh, has the opportunity to really be in trouble right now. Yeah. And any wait, wait. Yeah, Throw that go. grenade on Throw the table. Throw the grenades out there. <laughs> so any boss out there, any business owner, any business decision maker that tells you that that you if you work with them, well, that's how we've always done it, and that's how we're going to keep doing it. Yeah. They're, they're wah, leading you wah, off a wah. cliff. That's what I hear. Uh, right, exactly. It's like, <laughs> what the heck? So instead, challenge everyone you work with to think about how things can and should be done now because we have all this technology, all yeah. this connectivity, all this communication ability, yeah. all the things that we couldn't do in the past. But then there's a flip side, right? You have so many choices. Where do you go? What do you do? That's why business has to be focused on their audience and not yep. everyone because you can connect with everyone, but it's still amazingly hard to do. Right. And I'm not sure it is possible to connect with everybody. Because everybody's got different tastes. It's true. The idea is possible. The idea is possible. Um, the idea is possible 
too many people try. They still think they right. have to have everyone, right. right? I need everyone to like my widget. Right. No, you don't. You just need people who are really into that, who are who are down with it, who like the who can afford it, right. who have access to it, whether it's it gets shipped to them or they can go buy it local. You know, all kinds of factors that narrow down your audience. Everyone yep. is not your audience. Right. Unless you're selling oxygen, everyone is not your right. audience. And uh, <laughs> dirt, dirty little secret. They become your marketing tool, too. Absolutely. They are the best people to For be sure. talking about you. Brand ambassadors. Yes. Uh, endorsements, yep. referrals, word of mouth. Word yep. of mouth. People think now because we have social media and digital channels that we don't. Word of mouth is actually more powerful now Should because be. of social media and digital communication. Absolutely. Right? If we're using it right. That's right. If you tap into it correctly. Yeah. Which goes back to the conversation about the music industry. How do people find out about new bands, new artists, new songs? From their friends. From their friends. Friends. From their peer groups. So word of mouth, referrals, people sharing things online. Yep. The other flip to the business model, right? Right. Remember back in the day, back in the day when concerts were 5 or 10 or $15? Remember <laughs> oh, that? Geez. I think my first concert ticket was $18 wow. back in the early 80s. Uh, and it was like, ooh, I saved up money for that. <laughs> you had to, when you went to a show, the idea of bringing in a camera, a recording device, oh, yeah. a video camera yeah. was foreign Ver- verboten you were going to get your legs broken thrown right. out the door right exactly now knuckles and mr shush the were gonna best mention. artists are endorsing and supporting the idea of cell phone videos you bet. take your videos do your social media post film the whole show why right. because in the past it was if i could watch a video of this concert i won't why go to the go? concert right? right now you're creating foma fear of missing out the right velvet rope syndrome <laughs> right that happens right. because a 20 second, 30 second, three minute clip on YouTube or on linked uh, on Instagram or on Facebook of an artist that you know, my friend went to see right. makes me want to go see the show yeah. because I'm not seeing the entire concert. Right. I'm seeing portions of it. I'm seeing a lot of people enjoying it. Yeah. And I'm seeing other people now on social media saying, you're cool for going to that concert. Now I got to go to that yeah, concert and go. look cool in front of those exactly. people. Exactly. So the model flip is yeah. from no recording devices and security will throw you out to please bring your recording please bring devices. Your Get those cell phones share. up. Share, 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 share. 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 <laughs> right? Which are brand evangelists. There are people, other people referring your music, your artistry, what you're doing to their social circles in a completely non-mass marketing way. Right. It's a completely different flip uh, of the model. Flip of the model. Well, and the Edelman every year does the trust barometer. It's right. a worldwide survey. And for at least the last 15 years, the most trusted source of information, according to that uh, survey, is someone just like you and me. It makes perfect sense, right? Absolutely. Human beings prefer prefer to hear from a real human being who has similar tastes and values as they do to say, you're going to like this, or you can trust this, or you can hire these people, you can spend your money with them, uh, you can take a chance on them, right? Because that's what business transactions are is taking a chance and even this dinosaur is checking out the reviews on on products there you go i usually go right i'm to not the calling you stars. a dinosaur you called yourself i a call myself a dinosaur well but being surrounded by college students has got to oh be, yeah keeps keeps me young keeps right. me going so your college students have no idea what the what it was back in the day to go <laughs> buy, to a record store right. and buy an album vinyl's back though it's Vinyl always sort back. of been around, but it's very, very it niche. Is, yeah. Uh, but but there things come and go, and right. ret- retro is always Retros, is always a good thing, know. right? But right. the idea of record stores, uh, much like bookstores now, right. you know, it's it's something that yeah. that it's, the people going to the University of Oklahoma, it's foreign to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 definitely. Fewer and farther between. Right. Those kids are streaming music. They're yeah. using Spotify. They're uh, yep. Apple Music. They're downloading on Pandora, iTunes. Pandora, iTunes. They're, they're yep. getting stuff off off YouTube. And then obviously social media is hugely influencing on them, right? And they are picking up stuff off of Facebook, Instagram, yeah. Snapchat. For sure. You know? So uh, musicians, bands, recording artists, spoken word, anyone who mainly communicates through audio, here's your opportunity. These people... Younger people and older people, younger people are highly influenced, are easy to get in front of, they're easy to get in front of peer groups that will refer them word of mouth, etc. Yep. Uh, share parts of your shows when you come to their town, they'll buy your t-shirts, they're also really loyal. 
right? The right. younger the younger generation, yep. the millennials and below, are very loyal to things they like and think are cool. Once once they've made up their mind, right? Absolutely. So that's that's the business model for 2018 and beyond for musicians, artists, and other people who c- communicate through audio and video and new technology that we have. Oh, bless you. Excuse complete me. Complete control of via mobile devices and other pieces of technology. That's the lesson for today. I'm really curious if we riled anyone up out there. So let us know if you agree, disagree, whatever, in the comments where you found the the podcast today. And if you make some really good arguments, we'll have a discussion on Absolutely. one of our future shows. Absolutely, will. We appreciate oh, you guys turning oh, wait. in. Uh, RCA Records is calling you. Oh, really? Are they? I don't think <laughs> RCA even exists anymore. You just dated yourself. I did. I said dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, folks. Uh, Neo Marketing Podcast for October yeah. of 2018. We'll see you again in two weeks. Uh, until then, good luck. Ciao.